so occasional. <coughs> Good morning, everyone, and uh, I always find it a joy to be here, <coughs> especially to join you today as we come together for our harvest Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving for God's great gifts to us. <coughs> it's always wonderful to see how lovely the churches have been prepared for um, the harvest celebrations, all the beauty, uh, all the devotion and love that's put into it. And uh, as, as you can look about us today with these lovely flower arrangements, all reflecting autumn colours and things like that. So a huge thank you goes out to those who've given their time and their talents to beautify the church in this way. It's all, well, really, it's all part of our worship to God, offering ourselves in all these different ways that we can serve Him. It's all honouring to Him as well. But, uh, <coughs> we have opportunity to, to add to the display of flowers. If you look in during our first hymn, you can bring any harvest gifts that you may have brought with you and lay them on the uh, chancel steps, the other sanctuary steps. That would be lovely during the first hymn. Let's just pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for our food. Thank you for a huge harvest and the happy faces of those who receive that all around the world. We pray for those who don't have a reason to celebrate today and ask that you change their sadness into smiles and laughter. And change our hearts to be like yours so we see who you see in the faces of the poor. Move our hands to be like yours, so we share freely what we've been given. In the precious name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. <coughs> just had one notice to give, a sad notice. We just advise you the funeral service for Barbara Slee. That will be here at two o'clock this coming Wednesday, the 6th of October. <coughs> So we sing our first harvest hymn now, number 270, Come Ye Thankful People. <laughs>
to make them feel special and loved. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To the words, then, Father, please respond in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Then, Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Lord, our Father, we confess that we often use your gifts carelessly and acted as though we're not grateful. Then, Father, in your in mercy, mercy, forgive, forgive us. Enjoy the fruits of harvest, but forget they come from you. Then, Father, in your no mercy, forgive us and help us. And when we're full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry and those in need, then, Father, in no your mercy, mercy, forgive us and, and help us. And when we're thoughtless and do not treat with respect, care for the wonderful word, world you've made. Then, Father, in your mercy, forgive us, us and help us. And when we store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there was no God and no heaven, then, Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Through God's Holy Spirit, the face of the earth is renewed, our sins are forgiven, were raised to new life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And knowing we are forgiven people, we now sing the glory. Set for harvest. 
eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness, and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need, and for our own well-being. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8, beginning to read it at the seventh verse. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manner that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you, and in the end, to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my own hand have gained me this wealth, but remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you've made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough of everything you may share abundantly in every good work, as it is written. He scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, 
is with righteousness and pure bread. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed to sow and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ, and by the generosity of your sharing with them, and with all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for this for his indescribable gift. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God's who spawn his own creation. more will he clothe you, 
do a critical think. You do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink. You do not keep worrying, for it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things. And your Father knows that you need them. <coughs> this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. <coughs> well, it's harvest, so I've got a few funnies for you related <laughs> to harvest. I hope that's all right. Well, there was a farmer milking his cow. He was just starting to get into a, a good ribbon going when a, a bull flew into the barn and started circling around his head. Suddenly the bug flew into the cow's ear. The farmer didn't think much about it until the bug squirted out into his bucket. He had gone in one ear and out the other. <laughs> I was one about the magic tractor. He went down the lane and turned into a bee. <laughs> about the sign in a field where it says, Farmer allows walkers to cross the field for free, but the bull charges. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the farmer call his pig ink? It was always running out of the pen. What they call cattle with a sense of humour? Laughing stock. Well, it's hard, as you expect a dog to be really cold on the day. The harvest is said to be the oldest uh, service in the world. In a sense, it began probably way back when primitive man felt within himself a, a stirring of thankfulness to, to someone, or, <coughs> excuse me, to something. Not someone or something, of course, is what we've come to believe as a a personal God who cares and who provides for the world. In our modern times, the celebration of harvest has become one of the most popular church services. Popular, some say, because it might just be that in the harvest service there's a, a much closer link with people's everyday life and work. And as we come to celebrate and to give thanks, we have this great visual attraction generated through the array of flowers we brought up early in <coughs> produce, we see so tastefully and thoughtfully decorating the church today. And there may be an emotional kind of attraction generated through the singing of harvest hymns. It all becomes real to us. And perhaps because of this, as with primitive man, it can cause a stirring within to celebrate and give thanks to God who has given us all things to enjoy. And all things, not just the food we eat, but the sun that warms us, the rain that makes the earth fruitful, perhaps a little bit too much of it at the moment, but the wonderful scenery of land and sea that we have in real abundance in our part of the country. And of course, living where we do, we have the busy A590, normally with its lorries full of all kinds of goods, including livestock and food and fuel and other tractors and farm machinery moving from farm to farm, field to field. And in those fields, sheep and cattle and poultry. So much going on to remind us of God's wonderful provision of resources for us to develop and use for the good of one another. There's a story about an old lady who was very poor. She had nothing, no shelter, no food, no proper clothes. And she prayed to God that God would give her ten apples. This was wonderful. I'm sorry, God did give her ten apples. And this was wonderful. Now I can get all the things I need, she said. She was so hungry, of course, that she ate the first three apples and she felt really full. The next three apples she traded to rent a tiny shelter so that she could be safe from the rain and the sun. She exchanged the next three apples for some new clothes, and she was no longer cold at night, or would look clean and tidy during the day. But with one apple left over, why did you give me one apple more than I needed, she asked God. 
so you can have something with which to say thank you to me, if I am God. So yes, we have a God who gives us enough to say thank you to our ability to give away some of what we have. The ability to say thank you to our kind deeds. I say all those in that first reading we heard, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. And in a number of his letters, Paul returns to the theme of generosity and giving, something that he recognises as a central characteristic of living the Christian way of life. And this giving with an open hand and heart is a theme that reaches back right through the old, into the Old Testament. The understanding of offering the first fruits to God, the primary duty at all times, but especially at harvest time, as an expression of our thanks to God. And I think give thanks to God at harvest time, we recall that as human beings, we have been called by God to share in the stewardship of his creation, but to work with God in caring for its work of this world and its people. And of course, responsibility for the whole world is something far too big for us to grasp. Instead, we can focus on small, specific ways of sharing in the task of caring for God's world. You should probably be aware through the generous donations of food stuffs that are brought today will be help that some will be helped through the items sent to the Family Centre in Kendall and through those you know, donated to the food bank. Today there's also, if you wish, I'm not sure we have any leaflets here, but to help with some of the needs from lands far from ours, so we can respond to Bishop James Tyler's appeal. And in this year's leaflet he writes, Dear friends, I'd like to offer my sincere thanks for the support you've given to the Harvest Appeal over the past year, a year which has been like no other. It seems there is not a part of our world that COVID-19 pandemic has not touched. And while our own communities have been deeply impacted, many of our global neighbours have struggled to survive. The generosity you've shown in supporting the Harvest Appeal really has been incredible. And this has enabled both the Mother's Union and Christian Aid to meet the needs of those they work alongside. And over in the coming year, the Harvest Appeal will continue to support the work in the Democratic Republic of Congo, in Israel and occupied Palestinian territories. And as in previous years, 10% of the donation will also support three UK organisations that are working for a fairer and more sustainable world. Cumbria Development Education Centre, Carlisle One World Centre and Global Justice Now. So for our world to be a better place, we're all called to, to play our part through our kind deeds and acts. You could donate to that appeal or to any other appeal that may support some charitable work. Together we declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one of Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, be God and not made, at one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and put on his heart. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again 
in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and Catholic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So please sit on the altar now, led in a time of intercession. <coughs> Dear Lord our Father, as you have blessed the church with abundant grace, keep her faithful in the offering of the word and sacrament, knowing that all things come from you and then return to you. And we ask, Lord, that you send out your labourers to gather the harvest of the world, that all may know the riches of your love. Lord, hear your mercy. Amen. Amen. We pray for all who work that others may be fed, for those who bring in the harvest of the land and the sea. We pray for those employed in the processing and transport of food, and we especially pray for those who are stuck outside ports trying to unload their produce. Lord, grant a more just distribution of goods of the world. Lord, in your mercy, we ask, Lord, that you give to us, our families and our friends, grateful hearts for all your bounty and a concern for the needs of others. Bless those who work to bring meals for the poor and infirm in this community. Lord, in your mercy. We, lay, we pray, Lord, for all those who are hungry and undernourished, especially those in the Republic of Congo, in the Palestinian occupied areas, and in Israel. We are praying especially for children whose health is damaged by lack of food. And we ask, Lord, that you bless those who work for the relief of famine. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We give thanks for the departed who have been gathered into your care. Grant them the joy of faith brought to fruition in your heavenly kingdom. Merciful Father, accept Amen. these prayers for the, the sake, sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May the peace of the Lord be always be with you. Mr. Peggy is not hugging yet. <laughs> She's in the care of sign of peace <coughs> to one another. to come to our Lord's table and want to sing our next harvest hymn, number 253, for the beauty of the earth.
grace, receive the gifts we offer, and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. goodness we have this bread to offer, <clears throat> which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God, Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God, Lord God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have ourselves to offer, fruit of the womb and work of your lips, we will become for you a holy people. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. He is here. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, Father, through Jesus Christ your Son. Through him who created us in your own image and made us stewards of your good creation. Through him who teaches to celebrate in the birds of the air, the lilies of the field, the precious and life giving crops of the earth. Through him who free us from the slavery of sin, giving him to die upon the cross and to rise again for our salvation. Through him who begin your work of new creation, as we look for a new heaven and a new earth in which your righteousness dwells. Therefore we join with angels and archangels and give you voice, give voice to every creature in heaven, forever praising you and singing. Remember his dying and rising glory, 
and we rejoice that he intercedes for us in your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit that has been before you the gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and the blood of your dear Son. And as we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple for your glory. Bring us at last to Peter and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor to which he has created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom you have risen and in whom the Lord is planted for you in earth and heaven. We worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. <laughs>
thanksgiving to your love and creation, and have shared in the bread and the wine of the kingdom. By your grace, plant within us a reverence for all that you give us, and make us generous and wise stewards of the good things we enjoy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we pray, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we have served our Lord, we met us in your Son and who brought us in. Dying and living, we declare your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring light to others. We who the spirit of us give light to the world. Keep the firm in the hope we have set before us, so we will fall on the children of God and the Holy and the whole of the earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
all those that we would say this day and always. Amen. We freely we receive, freely we give. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Christ.